Hi, everyone. Um, today I am doing a read aloud for our book of the month. I've chosen Boy. It's actually been a recent favorite. Um, I've been reading this to Bastion since he was really little, um, but he's recently started pulling it off his bookshelf himself. So what I really love about Boy is that it features a disabled protagonist and also using communication in a different way. So Boy is deaf and he uses what they call his dancing hands, which are signs that he uses with his family. And then he uses other augmentative and alternative communication methods like drawing or writing in the sand to communicate with the other uh, people in his village and people that don't know his signs. Um, and so it's just a great opportunity for you to explain and talk about how people communicate differently, everyone's bodies and abilities are different, and just starting to show some representation of kids that might not be like your kid. Or alternatively, if you do have a child who has a disability, then you can show them that there are other kids like them. So again, I just think it's really important to have um, this representation, especially in a children's book that takes place in the Middle Ages. You know, this is a knights and dragons and, and uh, fighting medieval warfare kind of book, but yet there's just this protagonist who is different. And I feel like we don't see that a lot. We usually see books about disability and then cool books about dragons. And I love that they put that together because everyone, you know, everyone deserves to see their story in lots of different settings. So let's read Boy. All right. Once there was, oh, <laughs> once there was a king who lived high on a hill. His castle looked over the valley to the mountains beyond. He was a powerful man with lots of brave knights. Cling, clang, clong. The mountains were once rich with trees, and a, but a powerful dragon had burned them all up with his fiery breath. Uh-oh, the dragon burned them all up. That's a problem. In a small village on the edge of the burning forest lived Boy. Boy couldn't hear, but he was happy. He spoke with his dancing hands and he drew pictures for people in the sand. His parents loved his stories. See, he's signing the word house. But the villagers didn't understand. Oh, what a strange child, they would say as they walked by. They didn't understand Boy, he was different. All right, we're back at the dragon. Since the forest had burned, the king and the dragon had been fighting. There was roaring, flapping, running, hiding, dodging, weaving, and so much shouting. Boy couldn't hear the battle cries, but he could tell that his mom and dad were scared. The battles were loud and long, and no one ever won. One day, when they were battling, Boy ran off, and he ran into the middle of the fight. What do you think will happen next? Boy can't hear the battle. He's just looking at his lizard. Roar! Move, said the knights. Get out of the way said the king. Rawr, bellowed the dragon, but boy couldn't hear them. Uh-oh. Look at this. The knights waved their swords to get the boy's attention. Why aren't you listening, they asked. They don't know that boy couldn't hear them. Boy was surprised when he looked up. He watched them and then made his hands dance. So he talks to them with his signs. But the knights are confused. The king is puzzled. The dragon is mystified. So they don't understand him. What do you think he should try next? All right. Boy could see that they didn't understand his dancing hands. So he took a sword and he wrote in the sand. That was a good option. He says, why are you fighting? And that's a pretty good question. Why do you think they're fighting? Do you remember? Do you remember in the beginning? Why were they fighting each other? Yeah, why 
why were they fighting? There was silence. And then the king said, he started it. He burned our forest. And the dragon said, I'm sorry, I just sneezed and the forest caught on fire. And then your knights were chasing me. And the knights said, well, the king told us to chase him. Oh, it looks like everyone thinks it's someone else's fault. They're not communicating well. They're having a breakdown, right? The communication's breaking down. Hmm. Well, I thought you were coming to get my castle, said the king. Well, your castle's too small for me, said the dragon. I was scared they were chasing me. And I don't want to be scared of you either, said the knights. So boy drew a picture. He has an idea. He showed them how they could all stop fighting and be friends. There was a lot of chatting and laughing. I promise I won't chase you anymore, said the knights. And I will cover my nose when I sneeze, said the dragon. Boy couldn't hear a word, right? Because he's deaf, he can't hear. But he knew, oh, I missed that But he didn't need to, because he could see that they were becoming friends. Back in the village, everyone was waiting to see Boy. And they said, thank you, with their dancing hands. You can see all the villagers are saying thank you. So that is boy. Um, you can see this is geared for a, an older child. So the way I read it was what I would do for an older child. Um, starting at three or four, you could probably start asking some of those prediction questions. But definitely up through five, six, seven years old, I love to ask those what's coming next or why are they doing this? What's the problem in the story? These are great ways to get your... Learn your, your reader to think about those learning questions, you know, reading questions so that they can start to really delve into when you're reading books, what are you supposed to be thinking about? Um, predicting the next step, understanding why things are happening, cause and effect, um, story, grammar parts. Those are all those older level skills. Um, and a lot of those questions will kind of get at that and help them become a stronger reader and listener of stories. So that is boy.